All right, if you are a mid to high handicapper like myself, this video is for you. I'm gonna give you five tips to have more fun on the golf course. Caveat, disclaimer. This video is not for scratch golfers. It is not for tournament play. We are not PGA professionals. If that is you, turn this off. This video is just gonna piss you off. You're not gonna wanna watch it. Get rid of it, because there's gonna be some things in here are not going to like. Number, Number one. one. Take this scorecard right here and throw it out. Stop playing stroke play. I don't know how many times I can say that. It can be deflating and frustrating for us mid to high handicappers. Try some different games. Couple suggestions. Let's go with bingo, bingo, bongo. How about dots? Wolf, great game. Skins or even pickup sticks. Play games where the handicap does not matter as much. It'll make the game more enjoyable and it'll give the best golfers and the not best golfers an equal opportunity to compete hole by hole. Bonus tip on this one, stop playing 18 hole matches. Play three hole matches or six hole matches. It gives you an opportunity to reset the play. So you might see a sample scorecard below. Maybe you do something like this on your next 18 holes. Reset after every three or six holes allows you to reboot, if you will, as a mid to high handicapper. Tip number, Tip number two. two, play from different tee boxes. What drives me crazy is when I hear people say ladies tees and seniors tees. That is just not accurate and not how the tee box system was developed. For those that don't know, the tee box system was developed long before we had the USGA handicap system as a way to even the playing field between different golfers of different skill levels. Move up a tee box, move to the front. There is nothing worse for a mid to high handicapper to be hitting long irons or three woods into par fours all day. Not fun. Use this rule of thumb. How far do you hit your five iron? Multiply that by 36. Take a look at the equation below. That will tell you the entire length of a golf course that you should be playing. Nothing cool about playing the tips. If you're a 20 handicap, it is not gonna be fun. You know how much fun it is to be hitting a wedge into every par four? Play different tee boxes, experiment. And number three. All right, told you up front there was gonna be a rule that might upset you scratch tournament golfers. This is it right here. With your playing competitors up front, at the start of a round, establish what I would call a favorable rule set. Here's a couple of examples. On the green, maybe you establish what a good putt is or a gimme. Might be anything inside the flag stick you're gonna give them as good. Why? It's very deflating to miss that three foot putt. I've done it many of the times for par or even worse for a birdie. Use the flag stick. It's a good idea to keep pace of play up, keep the fun going. Determine how you're gonna play out of bounds, right? You might say everything will be a lateral drop, right? Makes things easier. You're not going back to the tee box. You're not reteeing multiple times. Play it as lateral, find where you cross, no closer to the pin, drop the ball there, right? Keeps pace of play up, but it also allows you an opportunity to get to that green rather than going back to the tee box and teeing off again. This one's gonna upset you. I get it. Play the ball as it lies. Let's be real here, okay? We're mid to high handicappers. Your ball's in a divot move it out of the divot. You're sitting on a tree root, move it off the tree root. There's no reason to hurt yourself. It is not gonna make that much of a difference in the game. Most important thing on this tip, you have established this rule with your playing competitors up front before the round starts. If you have not established these rules up front and your playing competitor sees you dropping in an incorrect location, sees you moving the ball out of a divot, now well, it's gonna cause some problems. Establish it up front. Number. Number. Four. Four. Re-evaluate who you're playing with. I gotta tell you, there is nothing worse than playing with a player who gets frustrated, throws clubs, smacks clubs against trees, yells, screams, gets upset. It just ruins the entire day. Look around, find some other players. There are a ton of apps out there right now for this that can 
set you up with like-minded players in your area. I'm not plugging any of them. I'm not promoting any of them. Look around. You will find them. They are out there. Find like-minded players that are at both your skill level and have that same perspective on what golf should be like. Before I get to this last tip, what I want you to do is down below, add a comment. Maybe you disagree with me, that's okay. Maybe you have another idea for a tip. Add them in the comments, let's get a conversation started and maybe we'll add another video talking about those additional thoughts. And, and finally, finally, tip, tip number, number five. five. And last one, force some fun. Here's what I mean by that, have a cocktail. Put some music on in the cart, but be respectful of the course and other players around you. You should not be able to hear the music from your cart four holes over. The only people that should hear your music should be right there in the cart with you. That is it. When you have the right people, you follow these tips, you have a cocktail or two, get some music going. It can be an incredibly enjoyable round almost regardless of what you shoot. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Get out and golf.